Right, back working on these um, export monitors today and I'm going to throw another spanner in the works with a tweeter. Um, I have these CAS tweeters, C's tweeters, however you want to pronounce it. And these are one of my favourites. These, I never get these right. These are the 414s. The 418 is the metal dome. Um, but anyway, very, very small uh, dome and you often find these in a lot of Rogers two ways and they tend to be crossed about 3k upwards so um, good for use as a kind of super tweeter really um, or a tweeter in a three-way design because they don't play particularly low we've got a very light small dome so it's going to be very good for the HF so I'm throwing these into the mix and I'm favoring these um, these have come out of a pair of Rogers C33s, which are a centre speaker, hence why they've got the shielding cup on them. So we'll keep those on there, but they're exactly the same. 8 ohm as well. So the woofers are 8 ohm, and the mids... What are they? Can't remember. I think they're 8 as well. Um, looking at that, 650 to 10 kilohertz. So uh, we're going to measure all these soon. Plus minus 2 dB. Mm, very nice. So yeah, originally I was going to use the ribbon. My mate Kevin from the Ditton Works reckons I should use that. Um, I think I've got that earmarked for another project. Um, I'm going to make a little two-way with some four-inch woofers I've got. So I, I think it's going to work. I'm going to use it with that and I don't know whether I really like the look of that for this project. Um, I think something like that. I mean, I, one of the reasons why I like this mid, dome mid, obviously a big dome, is it's a very similar size to the dust cap on this. So it's going to, I think if I keep these, use these with the black dome, I don't know just looks a bit more cohesive to me but we will see so I think what I'm going to do is near field test these now so it's going to be between these two tweeters definitely this mid definitely this woofer um, I won't near field test this obviously until we get it in a box but I can do the dome because there is no enclosure behind it and our tweeters and see what we get Right, hopefully you can see that all right. Sorry, I haven't got any means of um, capturing my screen properly. So uh, yeah, <laughs> rough and ready. Um, so I've been doing my near field tests this morning on the um, drivers and uh, it's been, yeah, quite interesting really. Um, I think, first of all, we'll look at the woofer because we know we're gonna use that, that woofer. We're kind of, um, kind of locked into that really. So if we... Um, we have a look at that first. So let me just change the limits. Okay. Right, okay, so very, very similar to the base performance that you'd get um, from the Studio One or the export monitor. Um, once we hit about 50 hertz, we really start rolling off and um, we're doing the same thing here so this is a 5 db window and once we hit about 55 hertz we start rolling off quite steeply um, and that's really what we can expect um, we've got very good bass output down into 40 hertz we're kind of 10 db down um, which is a lot but it's it's still really good bass um, and we perform pretty well actually, right up to a kilohertz, and then our phase is nice and consistent until we get into the 2k region. Um, so if we look at distortion of this driver, it's really really clean, um, but once we hit about 800 hertz, 
we're getting some distortion, but bearing in mind the reference um, SPL is about 93 dB. This is down at 40, 45 dB, so it's it's mega far down. You're not going to notice it, um, but we're probably going to start rolling off at 700 hertz, I would have thought, to meet our mid-range. But really, really clean. Um, near field spectral decay is really, really clean. Um, you know, in fact, I'm being quite critical there with the time I'm giving it. So let's change that slightly. Uh, let's pull up the time range. Let's do four milliseconds. That's kind of the standard. There we go. So it's it's really clean. Um, you know, I'm doing this near field, no room treatment, so I am negating most of the room, um, and that's really, really good. So that woofer is is great. It's working well in that cabinet, and we're kind of locked into that, really. Um, right, so let's, let's have a look at our mid-range. All right, okay, let's just highlight it slightly. There you go. Okay, so kind of typical mid-range, they kind of peak and drop each side. Um, big peak here. This will all come down when we start to put a network on it. Um, you know, we'll probably start the roll off around 2K um, and then pull it down harder. So I don't know how this is going to work out yet. Second order, something like that. Um, but again, a nice, consistent phase relationship up to 10k um, and it's yeah it's, it's a great mid-range um, if we look at the distortion I mean there's nothing there so again our main SPL at the main part of the um, frequency response is kind of 95 98 DB and here we are 40 DB nothing clean as a whistle so a great mid-range and then if we look at our spectral decay yeah I mean this this is where dome mid ranges are, are so so good they're so light they don't really ring or anything um, I mean that's that's beautiful if we can run that down to 800 Hertz and cross to the woofer then um, that's going to be pretty special really um, and let's look at the tweeters because this is quite interesting really um, I kind of narrowed it down to the ribbon and also to the Sears tweet, uh, tweeter that I've got, which I've shown earlier on. Um, I've kind of poo-pooed the other two. So it's between those two. And the ribbon is a very inexpensive ribbon. Um, I think they're about 30 quid each. And for some reason, I seem to have six of them. And I don't quite know where they came from. But anyway, that's what we've got. So let's look at the ribbon first. So it's typical tweeter. Um, let's highlight it slightly. So yeah, typical tweeter. You have this rise up and then flatten off. Now I'm measuring up to, let's change the limit slightly. Okay, so I'm measuring up to 22 kilohertz and we've got great output. Um, so here's a 90 dB. So probably around eight is where we're going to start using it. And here we are at 22. So what happens with this peak when we start putting a network on it? I don't know. We might have to notch filter and pull this down. But we do have a phase change here. So that might be a um, bit of baffle step from the way I was testing it. I don't know. Um, if we look at the distortion, this is the interesting part. There is a fair bit from three kilohertz all the way up to 10. And then again, our sort of main signal is about 94 dB all the way down here at 40. So we've got distortion about 60 dB, but when we get to 10 kilohertz, 11, it's, it's gone. So, you know, a, a ribbon is not a, a driver that can play low and we wouldn't want to use it low, but it is crisp and clean. Um, so I'm quite impressed with it, really.
spectral decay nothing you know there's no i think even if i come down lower so at 65 db so 30 db down from the original signal uh we get a bit of ringing but 30 db down yeah it's nothing to worry about really let's put that back up um so yeah really pleased with that ribbon actually so let's look at the um Sears tweeter uh where are we okay um yeah again typical tweeter uh rises and drops like a mid-range has a, a peak a sweet spot and when you fold it down um, with your crossover you'll pull some of this out so yeah um, certainly not as responsive as the ribbon and when we get up to 22k it is quite down in output compared to the ribbon so distortion wise there, there's nothing really again the main signal is up here at 96 97 db and down at 40 db we're still not showing anything so you know clean as a whistle um so yeah just can't measure anything really um spectral decay really clean again if we come down a bit lower and have a look there is a bit more ring in there than the ribbon the ribbon is a faster driver um but yeah still not really an issue at all so i think if we look at let's look at the, the lot of them all together if you can see those okay so our woofer is frequency response wise pretty good all the way up to 2k and then we get a bit gnarly um but we saw distortion at sort of 700 hertz around there so really i want to stop using it at about 700 hertz our mid-range here it's pretty good um like i say when we start introducing the network and folding this down this should flatten out and in terms of how our tweeters look, I think the red trace, which is the ribbon, looks much better against the mid-range. Um, we have a gap here, but by the time we start rolling the tweeter off, rolling the mid off, and the sum, we should be pretty good. So probably about nine, eight or nine kilohertz is probably where our mid to tweeter crossover point is going to be. And you can see the mid-range has a huge natural roll off at about 11k that starts really drops off but whilst you could leave it that way um there is distortion there so we do want to kind of um knock the top out of it as well but yeah really pleased with that i think we've got a good set of drivers to work with there um and i think we can produce something decent here so i'll um Put all these measurements up in in pictures so you can have a good look at them i've only done on axis so i've not done off axis there really is no point in doing that um as far as i'm concerned until they're it playing in the baffle that they're going to play off um and then we can you know if we have to tweak the crossover for a bit of off axis response improvement against on axis because you you don't listen to a stereo pair of speakers on axis um then that's what we'll do so uh yeah but so far pretty good uh, one thing i do want to show you is um we'll do some near field base tests on the on the woofer because it's pretty good right so if we use the signal generator um and let's see see how good this woofer is like i say i've compared the measurements i'm getting from this woofer with the results i've had from my studio ones the LS36s and it's very very similar um, we get to 50 Hertz really easily and then we start rolling off so um, still gonna get great bass performance from this right so we'll start at 160 Hertz and we've got pretty good output there 125 our port isn't really doing it uh, anything at the moment we've got this little square port here which first glance would suggest it doesn't really do anything but it once you get 
right down lower frequency that port is doing quite a bit and it seems to still be working well with this driver I was wondering whether I'd cut this out into a circle and play with some port tuning um, but really what we're getting is is good like I say I want this to be a little bit sympathetic to the original design so 125 Hertz 100 Hertz again that port isn't really doing anything at the moment Hertz. Our port's beginning to have a minor effect, not really much at all. So it's nice that this is tuned very low, because um, often that can interfere with it. This driver's performance higher up, um, because you will be getting out of phase signals from this. But being so small, yeah, it's pretty good. 63 Hertz and now our port is beginning to um, resonate so we're hitting the point of resonance of the port I don't know if the difference comes across on the camera right 50 Hertz now we're really using the port so I can't really hear too much but if I uncover the port, there's a big difference there. 40 hertz, to my ears, that sounds as loud as 50, but we cover the port, it all but disappears. 31 hertz, that won't come across unless you're listening to head using headphones. Our woofer's doing a bit of work. Lots of air from the port. And I can still hear output there. I can feel it as well. Pretty good. So yeah, really pleased with that. Um, I think in terms of the way the woofer works in this enclosure, um, without really going further with it mucking around with ports the volume of the box versus the woofer we're using i think it works um, and the performance we're getting when we measure it in this box is really good so yeah i've um plugged up the the holes with the original drivers they're obviously not connected they're just to seal up the box um but i think we're good to go that woofer sits in the in there nicely um so yeah we'll use the ribbon and we use the mid-range and once they're in there we can then start getting this crossover put together right that's going to be it for this part um next part i think we'll be sticking it in front of the mic and getting this um, crossover built we'll also mount the drivers as well all right cheers